Now call on uh, Deputy Lucinda Creighton. You've uh, 20 minutes, Deputy, if you so wish. Thank you very much, Ken Corla. Um, I'm not sure that I'll take the full 20 minutes, but I'll be close enough. Um, I would like to begin by welcoming um, the decision of Minister Fitzgerald to establish an independent policing authority in Ireland. I think it is long overdue. Uh, it is something that I welcome, though I don't underestimate um, the challenges that um, it will pose. Um, and I do have some uh, concerns, but overall I think it is a welcome development. Um, I do think, however, that today's debate provides us with um, an appropriate reminder if we needed one, um, of the sequence of scandal and reports which have led us to this point. Um, I think most notably the Giran report, the Tolan report and um, recently of course the interim report of the Fennelly Commission. Um, all of the events which led to these reports and indeed the findings of all of these reports themselves are matters of deep and existential concern for Ireland and for our people, um, and they really do strike at the, the very heart of our democracy, um, because if we cannot have faith in uh, the policing ability, uh, if we cannot have faith in the security of our state, um, and if we cannot have faith that the duties um, of our police force and indeed of our justice ministry cannot be conducted in an efficient, in a transparent, in an honest and open fashion, then we have a very, very major problem within our democracy. Uh, because good administration of justice, good management of justice and indeed security in any state um, goes to the very core of that democracy. The policing authority has been, has been a long coming. I mean, it's been on the table since the summer of 2014. As I said, I welcome it. Um, but I do think that there has been a tendency at the highest levels in govern government to point to the imminent arrival of a policing authority as though that will solve all the problems that exist within our justice system and within um, Garda Síochána. And I think that's wrong. Uh, I think it is a part of the solution but it is not the whole solution, and I believe that anybody who thinks it is, is, is seriously mistaken. The fundamental question, I think, um, which faces us and which faces the Minister in her task, is will the establishment of the Garda Authority restore public confidence in our national police force? Because public confidence after recent events is undoubtedly at an all-time low. In 2014, the Toland Report recommended and I quote, that the Minister for Justice, through the Department of Justice, needs to hold Angarda Siakana accountable as a critical and resource-intensive public service while respecting their operational independence. And that's a difficult and tricky balance to strike. I absolutely uh, acknowledge that. I've heard pre uh, previous speakers, other deputies, um, talking about the need to instill the concept of public service right back into the, to the heart of our policing, and I, I would absolutely agree with that and endorse those comments. But it's now 15 months since Brian Purcell left his position as Secretary General in the Department of Justice, and he has yet to be replaced. Now, how can the public have confidence in the Department itself to hold Angarda Siakona accountable, as required by the Toland Report, when the department is itself unable to, to fill one of its key leadership positions. Uh, this is a cause for, for significant concern. It's something that I am very worried about, and it's something that I think the Minister needs to address as a matter of absolute priority and uh, urgent importance. Minister Fitzgerald has told the House that one of the changes which has taken place in her department uh, in response to the Toland report is that she now formally meets with her Secretary-General on a monthly basis. Now, I find it hard to understand how any minister could or would or should run a government department without meeting their Secretary-General far more frequently than on a monthly basis. But I, I accept the Minister, in fairness, I, I absolutely accept you weren't, you weren't the Minister um, in the department um, until just before the Toland report. But I mean, that should be standard practice in every single department. Um, in my experience, it's not, but it, it ought to be. 
Um, but I suppose the question that I would ask is, if, if that position is currently occupied on an interim basis, then what value are these meetings in the context of developing a long-term strategic direction and vision for the department? Um, because there is no permanent occupant of that position. Um, it's a very, very difficult position for the Minister to find herself in, um, but it's one, as I said, that I believe needs to be addressed urgently if we are to have the sort of um, root and branch reform of the Department of Justice which has been promised, which has been clearly recommended uh, by the Toland Report and which I think the public deserves to see. This leader leaderless um, scenario in the department is, is illustrative, I think, of a department which is viewed by the people, by, by the Irish people as being, in the words of Kevin Toland's uh, review group, beset by a closed, secretive and silo-driven culture. Now that report also found significant leadership and management problems. And the third significant finding was ineffective management processes and structures to provide strong strategic oversight to key agencies, both to hold them accountable and to ensure their effectiveness is maximised. The Toland report has, in the last fortnight, been corroborated, um, I think, very, very clearly by the interim report of Mr Justice Fennelly, which again exposed a complete absence of efficient communication and transparency within the department. Um, and this, again, is an issue of significant concern in a modern, developed democracy. I think the question that I would ask of the Minister, and no doubt she will endeavour to answer it, is who is actually leading this root and branch reform uh, of the department which has been promised? Um, because without a permanent Secretary General of the department, it's very hard to see how uh, it can or is happening. I note that um, Deputy Collins earlier expressed his hope that this bill will maintain current levels of public trust in Angarda Siakona. And I have to say, on this point, I disagree. Um, I think, as I said um, at the beginning, um, the current levels of public trust in Angarda Siakona um, are very, very low. Um, and it is incumbent upon the Minister, uh, her department, her Secretary General, when he or she arrives, and Commissioner O'Sullivan to show leadership by taking active steps to restore a relationship of confidence between the Irish public and on Garda Siakona. And that will take time. And I think Deputy O'Donnell has highlighted very clearly the major issues of concern, which I, I accept are, are absolutely acute in rural Ireland, but they're not exclusive to rural Ireland. They are right throughout the country. Um, a huge huge concern amongst particularly elderly people, people living alone, uh, who really feel isolated um, and who have, um, who have lost confidence in, um, in the policing of this state, um, partly because of the scandals that we have spoken of that have emerged, but also, of course, because of the resourcing issues in rural Ireland. And these are significant challenges that face, face you, Minister, and I genuinely wish you well in trying to tackle them. Um, I think one of the, 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 the issues that has come to light in recent weeks, which um, really il illustrates that things have not changed yet, that the culture uh, which led to the vilification of whistleblowers within Angarda Siakona just um, two years ago or less, uh, 18 months ago, um, are still there. That, that those problems and that culture are still there. Um, recent whistleblower revelations show that many of the most serious um, cultural problems still exist. They have not been rooted out, despite you know, very lofty statements by the Guard, the Commissioner, and indeed by the Minister. Um, we saw a, a very recent case where uh, two whistleblowers found that when they made complaints about a se senior member of Angarda the Siakona, that the person assigned with on, within Angarda the Siakona to investigate the case was actually connected to the person who was complained about. Um, I think that that is completely inappropriate. It shows that the systems are not uh, changing and, uh, and with those systems, unfortunately, the culture remains uh, largely unchanged. So, Minister, uh, I think that this is something that has to be prioritised and it will require a huge effort and coordination between yourself, the Guard, the Commissioner, the new policing authority. It is imperative that that culture um, is routed out of Angarda Siakona. Otherwise, the public will not have confidence uh, in their ability to discharge their duties. A further question which arises is this. 
What aspects of this bill would have stopped the events described in the Fennelly report, uh, the interim report, from happening? Um, I think that the, the sacking of, of the Garda Commissioner was a clear abuse of power. It was an abuse of power for cynical, uh, self-preserving, and I would argue for, for really quite base political reasons. Um, and nothing has happened in that regard. The government has essentially closed ranks, denied any wrongdoing, um, and there is no facing up uh, to the very, very clear findings in Fenley, um, the huge contradictions in evidence that were given um, by the various uh, people who surrounded those hazy events um, where the Garda, Garda Commissioner was effectively uh, constructively dismissed. And given that Antishuk, supported by all of his cabinet colleagues, including uh, the Minister for Justice, continues to stick to his completely incredible version of events, which purports that um, former guard, the Commissioner Callanan, retired from his position entirely of his own volition, rather than at the behest of Antishuk. It appears very, very clear to me that the events of March 2014 could easily be repeated, notwithstanding all of the contents of this very worthy bill. And I think that that is a matter of grave concern. Furthermore, what aspects of this bill or of a new Garda authority would address the highly worrying state of affairs which allowed the former Commissioner Martin Callanan to destroy between eight and ten bags of documents on the day of his resignation? That is something that I think the Minister urgently needs to address. A decade ago, the Morris Tribunal specifically recommended the introduction of sanctions for the destruction of any papers or journals by any member of Angarda Siakana. This recommendation remains utterly unimplemented, and I think that that sits in neat parallel to the failure of the Garda Commissioner to respond in any meaningful way to my letter of complaint in relation to um, uh, Mr. Callanan's destruction of such a substantial number of documents. Minister, you've been very quiet on this, I have to say, disappointingly so. Uh, you have the power to launch an inquiry into what happened to that documentation to establish what was contained in it. Were there sensitive um, um, materials relating, pertaining to, to cases that the former guard, the Commissioner, was involved in or aware of? Uh, and I think it's really essential, Minister, that you confront that issue. Um, I think it's essential that you recognise that changes such as those proposed in this bill will not achieve real change if they are not accompanied by cultural changes within your own department and within the police force as outlined in the Tolan and Gearin reports. And we have a long way to go before those issues and recommendations are implemented. Uh, I, I do welcome the Minister's commitment to having a debate in this House uh, in relation to the appointment of um, the members of the Garda Authority um, and um, for the requirement for a resolution in both Houses um, to make um, the appointment. However, I do think it's regrettable that such parliamentary oversight of a state body is an anomaly in the context of the government's failure to fundamentally and substantively reform the way in which appointments are made to state boards. And that remains the case. Uh, nothing um, really has changed. The establishment of the public appointment service has not removed the influence of political patronage from, from the appointment process right across the board. And this government continues to repeat the sort of cronyism of its predecessors. And I do think that the, the slight anomaly in the legislation which um, for the appointment of the first board, um, which allows essentially um, the government to make the initial appointments. I think that's a mistake because I think, Minister, you should be starting as you intend to go on. I think it should be a, a completely open and tra transparent process where people apply, are selected um, completely independently of government um, and then um, are ratified or otherwise by the, the Dáil and Shannon. I think that that would be um, a much better way to start. I think it would be a better start for the authority itself. I think it would um, lend credibility to, to your stated intention of having an independent, a completely independent policing authority. So I think that that slight caveat in the legislation um, is, a, is a shame and, and perhaps you might consider at committee stage um, a accepting or indeed report stage of accepting or indeed putting down your own amendments to change that. Um, 
Finally, Kian Korla, I, I just want to, to mention um, political involvement um, in Angard the Shiakono, something that I think has been deeply controversial, obviously, in the last number of years. The issue of the authorities' membership um, forms part, part of a wider issue raised um, by this bill, namely the role of politics and politicians in the administration of policing. Um, it's clear from the proposed legislation that the government will retain a role in policing, um, most notably in its capacity to appoint or remove a guard, the commissioner, and um, in its appointment of uh, members of the authority initially. Um, there is no easy answer to this, and I mean that genuinely. Um, a balance must be found between depoliticising policing and maintaining democratic accountability in the area of justice. Um, and that is a balance which I think we have seen in the HSE, for example, has failed utterly and completely. Um, and I think the lessons of the HSE underscore the dangers um, or the potential risks of removing the administration of a major arm of government from the direct uh, control of a government minister to, to an outside authority. Um, so I think, Minister, you, know, you have to be really cognizant of this, and we all do as parliamentarians as this bill goes through the House, and indeed in reviewing and assessing its performance over the coming years, because it will not be acceptable for a minister to come into the chamber, as we have seen with successive ministers for health now, and say, you know, it has nothing to do with me, it's a matter for the policing authority. You know, I think it's really essential that the Minister for Justice is still a central figure in terms of being accountable to the, to the House and therefore to the people in terms of policing policy and the administration of justice um, nationwide. And that is a, a, a balancing act. Uh, one thing that concerns me um, is that the fingertips of the Labour Party are evident in this bill, uh, given the bizarre obligation of the new authority to consult with trade unions in the formulation of a code of ethics for the Gardaí. I have to say it is absolutely unclear to me what meaningful role a trade union has to play in this process, um, but their inclusion under Section 16 of the Act once more reminds us of their disproportionate influence over the affairs of government, most recently demonstrated by their um, shameful exclusion uh, from the requirements of Minister Howland's Lobbying Act. Absolutely shameful. Um, and I think it shows that there is, a, there is one particular rule for every other organisation, and then there's a very special rule um, which applies to trade unions, obviously at the behest of their friends in government. I think it's bizarre and it's disappointing that such vested interests continue to wield influence over all aspects of governance in the state, uh, notwithstanding the promise of a democratic revolution uh, just four and a half short years ago. So, um, in conclusion, Kian Korla, I want to just urge the Minister um, to take into account the very legitimate issues that have been raised by members, um, both on the government benches and the opposition benches in relation to this bill. I think um, Deputy Staunton, who is obviously the Chairman of the Justice Committee, um, has made some very pertinent points. The Justice Committee has given great attention to this, um, to this bill and has made some significant recommendations, some of which are included, many of which are not. And I hope that there will be genuine engagement from you, Minister. I think it's in the interests of all of us that we restore confidence in your department, that we restore confidence in Angar the Shiakona, and that we ultimately restore faith amongst the Irish people in the administration of justice in this country. I don't think that that's um, going to be an easy task. This bill alone certainly will not achieve it. But I think, Minister, if you show a willingness to work with members from all sides of the House to ensure that this bill um, does what it set out to achieve, uh, which is to ensure a strong and robust independent policing authority to hold senior levels of management in Angar the Shiakona to account and to ensure that we see a genuine, a genuine sea change in the culture within Angar the Shiakona. I think if you, if you are committed to achieving that, there are many, many members of this House who will work with you to try to achieve it. Thank you very much.